part two of 12 lead EKG, we're going to talk about axis and axis deviation, um, axis depolarization, and the importance of being able to determine axis. So a couple of definitions uh, that you should know. Vector is the value of all electrical charges from all myocytes at a specific moment. The uh, definition that Brenda Beasley gives out of understanding 12 lead EKG, a vector is a mark or symbol that can be used to describe any force having both magnitude and direction. The direction of electrical currents in cardiac cells that are generated by depolarization and repolarization of the atria and ventricles as it spreads from the endocardium toward the epicardium. Most frequently, arrows are used for this purpose. The mean QRS vector is typically represented by a single arrow. That leads us into axis, axis of depolarization. The axis of depolarization is the vector created by the ventricles during depolarization. So this arrow that you see here is actually representing the axis. And as I mentioned, they, they put this arrow in over this heart right here, but they actually put it in at almost the regular angle that it would go at around 59 or 60 degrees. Overall, the direction of travel of electrical impulses as they move through the heart is what forms the axis. The normal axis is downward and to the left. So if you could just think for just a moment, uh, the hexaxial reference system, uh, you would actually be able to kind of get an idea of how it works here. So let me just find a different color. And so if this is lead one at zero degrees, And my positive is here. And then if this is AVF at 90 degrees, so it's looking at an inferior part, in between 0 and 90 degrees is what would be considered normal. So your normal axis would be around... 60 degrees. Now, this is what makes lead 2 the most appropriate monitoring lead when you are just monitoring a patient and looking for uh, lethal arrhythmias because it actually follows very closely along the heart's normal electrical conduction pathways. Now, if you notice here that the hexaxial reference system continues on with lead 3 at 120 degrees. And it moves forward. You would have AVL up here, and you'd have AVR somewhere around in here. And so that would give you your six leads, 1, 2, and 3, AVF, AVR, and AVL. Upright complexes in leads 1, 2, and 3 forces uh, going toward all three leads, impulses are going towards a positive, and they make a positive deflection. So we're going to talk about this here in just a few minutes, but one of the ways that you can actually kind of get an idea of the way that the axis is going is by looking at the positive leads or looking at the QRS in uh, a couple of different leads. So your mean QRS axis determination. Now you can you have a, a axis of the atria and you have an axis of the QRS as well. Um, when we look at QRS determin or axis determination, we're looking at the QRS uh, in this situation because that's what's going to matter the most when it comes to actual cardiac output. So the heart's electrical energy is a sum of electricity 
generated by each individual cardiac muscle cell. So we know that. We know that the, the myocardial cells uh, have to receive the stimulus and they, through the all or nothing phenomenon, they all have to re receive the stimulus and then contract. Uh, all of them working together is what actually makes the full muscular contraction. Uh, energy exhibits both magnitude and direction. So you see that with the definition with vector. And any force that has both magnitude and direction is a vector. So it takes many vectors to form an axis. This combines all instantaneous vectors, as I mentioned, many vectors uh, occurring during the cardiac cycle into a single average vector called the resultant cardiac vector or the mean cardiac vector. Um, other definitions that you could see would be lead axis. The, the lead axis is the axis of any given lead. So again, that goes in with the um, hexaxial reference system. The Beasley definition of the mean QRS axis is the average of all ventricular vectors in a single large vector with a mean QRS axis, usually pointing to the left and downward. As you look at figure... So again, I've told you in the past, imagine that with the hexaxial reference system that each axis or each lead that we look at has a camera. And as the conduction goes towards it, we're going to see it positive. And as it goes away from it, we're going to see it negative. Now, some situations you might see um, as I mentioned earlier, a uh, isoelectric uh, or equiphasic uh, waveform, if the axis is going, you know, perpendicular to it. But one of the things that you can say is that if you've got an axis such as this one, which is, you know, along this way, it is actually going leftward and it is going downward. So as far as any lead any lead from here to here you should see it as positive because these are all downward and these over here are leftward So just remember that the axis is the sum of the vectors that are traveling toward the positive electrode of any given lead. The heart's normal electrical axis, 59 to 60 degrees, depending on what uh, textbook you read. Uh, in a normal tracing, lead 2 should have the most positive deflections as the axis of a lead uh, is uh, positive 60. So if, if under normal circumstances, the axis of that patient um, is going in around that normal uh, 59, 60 degrees, lead two should be the most positive because that is the direction in which the bulk of the electrical conduction is traveling. If the calculated axis of the heart falls outside of normal, axis deviation exists. Uh, most of your modern 12 lead ECG machines will electronically calculate axis of various waves, uh, so you don't really have to do that. Uh, uh, and really the point in us talking here is really more for you to understand these definitions and to understand what axis deviation means. Uh, when a machine does not calculate the QRS, you can look at different things. Uh, some ways you can uh, calculate it off of leads one, two, and three if you want to get exact interpretations. Now, the way that we're going to look at it, we just really want to know, is it going normally? Is it going rightward? Is it going opposite of normal? Or is it going leftward? And so in that case, we would actually look at leads one and ABF. Uh, so again, these are definitions that I have already uh, mentioned to you. The mean QRS axis and the lead axis. 
if you've got any alteration in the normal flow of current that goes outside of 0 to 90 degrees, that is considered axis deviation. This is caused by several different things. Um, mainly, it's going to be disease of the myocardium or death of the myocardium. Your mean axis commonly flows from top to bottom or right to left or a combination of all. The mean axis commonly flows to a point of positive 30 degrees, and when the heart is enlarged or damaged due to disease or death of muscle, uh, conduction pattern is altered or deviated. Now, um, death of muscle is going to actually push the axis away, whereas enlargement of heart muscle is actually going to pull axis towards it. So we would use the quadrant system, and this is actually going to be based off of that hexaxial reference system. So again, I'm going to try to draw just so you can get a little bit better idea. Let's use a little blue here. Um, just so that you can get an idea. So up in your left, so again, this is normal, 0 to 90. Up in your left, this is going to be where AVL is. This is going to be lead 1, and then this is going to be lead 2. Oh no, I've got to use a different color. So this is going to be lead 2. This is going to be AVF. This is going to be lead 3. Uh, let's see. Lead 1, lead 2, lead 3, AVL. And then you've got AVR up here. So, where each of these, that's going to indicate the positive for that particular lead. So again, going back to the reference I made earlier, if you've got a cardiac axis that's going at around 60 degrees, is going completely opposite of AVR or the positive in AVR. So you would expect AVR to have a negative QRS, whereas in lead 2, it's going directly towards it, so you would expect lead 2 to have a positive QRS. So axis deviation, uh, what, what's the point here? It may provide important clues about the heart's electrical activity, but it is not specific for any particular diagnosis, and as a matter of fact, we really won't use it in the field as a means of diagnosis uh, where we would be able to use like uh, identification of SD elevation and things like that. Uh, but again, understanding how something works normally uh, gives us a good indication of how things work abnormally as well. So the fastest method to determine the QRS axis uh, involves using the QRS complexes in leads 1 and AVF to create a simple quadrant system like I just uh, showed here. Uh, the intersection represents the impulse origin with the four quadrants where the impulse can travel. I will show you now just with this little diagram here. Uh, if in lead 1, if you've got a 12 lead and you've got a positive QRS in lead 1 and a positive QRS in AVF, then that's a normal axis because that means that your conduction is going downward and leftward. Okay. So what about you've got a positive in lead 1. So remember this is lead 1 and this is... A, V, F, all right, so you've got a positive in lead 1, but a negative in A, V, F, so what does that mean? That means that your axis is actually being pushed leftward and upward, so it's going opposite of where your positive for A, V, F would be, so it's going to give you a negative deflection in AVF. So what about if you've got a negative 
in lead one and you've got a positive in ABF. Well, what that's going to indicate is that you've got a rightward pull of your axis. So you're going downward and rightward, which means you're going opposite of the positive in lead one. So it's showing it as a negative in lead one, but you're still going downward. And so that would be a positive in AVF. Now, I keep mentioning um, AVR and uh, extreme right axis deviation and all of that. So in that case, you would have a negative lead one and a negative AVF. And what that means is that essentially your conduction is going opposite of of where it should go. So if down this area here, this is going to be left ventricle pumping, having good cardiac output, uh, the the conduction for ERAD or extreme right axis deviation is going to be upward and rightward, which is going to give you a negative deflection of AVF and a negative deflection on lead one. So again, this is just reminding you if lead one's positive and lead AVF is positive, that's a normal axis. If lead one is positive and lead AVF is negative, then that indicates left axis deviation. And then if it's uh, negative in lead one and positive in AVF, that indicates right axis deviation. And if it's negative in lead one and negative in AVF, that indicates extreme right axis deviation and that is not good at all. So here's an example. So I've got my 12 lead printed off, and now I have uh, determined that I don't have any type of MI. Um, that's going to be my main, uh, my main concern. But right now, I'm practicing determining axis, and so I've printed off my 12 lead, and I've got, I'm looking in lead 1, and so my QRS in lead 1 is upright. And my QRS in AVF is also upright. So what does that mean? That means that my conduction is traveling downward towards AVF and leftward towards lead one. So it is somewhere in this normal zero to 90 degree quadrant. So just off of looking at leads one and AVF, I'm able to determine that at least I do have a positive axis or a normal axis. Now, does this get me my exact numbers? No. In pre-hospital setting, as a paramedic on the ambulance, do I need to have exact numbers? No, I, I don't. So again, this is just uh, some examples of what could cause right, uh, right, left, and normal axis. So with right axis deviation, right axis deviation, you are going to have a lead one, which is going to have a negative QRS and an AVF, which is going to be positive. So this could be caused by CHF, COPD, pulmonary hypertension, um, maybe even something like uh, 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 right ventricular hypertrophy. Um, and so essentially what's happening here is that the uh, right ventricle gets more um, muscular and it requires more electricity. So it's actually going to pull the axis to the right. This is a rare occurrence in adults and it's almost always pathological. So if you see it, uh, it's going to be associated with something um, not normal or hereditary, but as you can tell on this slide right here, what is actually happening is, is the conduction is being pulled to the right side instead of going down to your real muscular left side. With your left axis deviation, deviation is between zero and negative 90 degrees. Now, some textbooks and um, some, some 
experts are going to tell you that normal axis or OK axis is negative 30 to 90 degrees. So that's where we will actually, if we have uh, something that falls within, let's say, negative 25 degrees, then we're going to say, hey, that's probably a normal axis. Um, but in this case, with left axis deviation, you've got a positive QRS. Uh, in lead one and a negative QRS and AVF. Now this can be caused by hypertension, which is going to cause increase in the muscle of the left side, um, valvular heart disease, things like that. So this could also be a normal variant in adults. It's also common in obesity and uh, also athletes. Talk about two extremes right there. Um, but in this case, again, you'll see a positive lead one um, and a negative AVF. Now this is a physiological left axis. Uh, a pathological left axis is going to be caused by some kind of disease process. Um, if, if it's pathological left axis, it is bad. Um, much worse than a physiological left axis. Generally, this indicates the presence of a left anterior fascicular block, which uh, can cause cardiac arrest. And then the worst of it all, extreme right axis deviation, ERAD, no man's land, whatever you call it, you do not want your conduction or your patient's conduction going the opposite way of where it should be going. So in this case, you're going to see a negative lead one and a negative AVF. This is also sometimes called a indeterminate axis deviation. With the indeterminate axis, it's usually ventricular in origin, which really means that it's usually uh, related to ischemia or uh, even to, to the point of necrosis where the cardiac tissue cannot uh, accept the conduction because it's for all intents and purposes dead. Um, in this case, that patient probably has had some uh, severe uh, muscle damage in the lower uh, portions of the heart. Common causes of axis deviation with right and left is going to be some uh, for pathological, could be some kind of uh, um, cardiac issue or pulmonary issue. With right axis especially, uh, oftentimes you'll see um, causes core pulmonary, COPD, things like that. So uh, your QRS axis will always move towards hypertrophy or um, bigger muscle and away from infarction. Why is that? And I want you to think about that and I want you to be able to answer that. Why is it that the QRS will always move towards hypertrophy and away from infarction? And the answer here is that an enlarged ventricle is going to cause more electrical energy and an infarcted ventricle is not going to use any type of electrical energy. So this concludes the discussion on axis and axis deviation. Again, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me, nickray at suscc.edu. Thank you for listening.